Okay, so uh, we're gonna take a we're gonna kind of go further into Boolean logic now, um, and a little bit further into loops as well at the same time. Okay, and this is all part of flow control. Okay, so flow control in a program means uh, controlling the execution of of code, right? So we're gonna make it skip parts of the code. We're gonna make it repeat parts of the code based upon a given set of conditions, right? So basically the conditions in this case are gonna be sensor values. Uh, we're just using switches right now, so it's really easy because the switches are just zeros and ones. We're not really concerned right now about other, other types of values like ranges of values or sensors that give other values other than zeros and ones, okay? So right now we're just kind of concentrating on using just sensor values that are zero and ones, which are switches, all right? Okay. This time, what we're going to do is we're gonna be using two switches to create three sets of conditions, okay? So we're gonna use a loop to either start a motor, stop a motor, or to entirely just stop the program and just stop the loop altogether to basically turn off the power, okay? Make sense? Okay. All right. Um, okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and do our motors and sensor setup. And we're just gonna go ahead and add two uh, touch switches. So it's gonna be left switch and right switch. Okay, and the motors are going to be uh, just, uh, we're gonna call it wheel motor. And it's gonna be a 393 motor. Okay, and as usual, we're gonna go ahead, not as usual, but in this case, we're gonna go ahead and put it into a while loop. So we're gonna go control structures, control structures. We're gonna drag over our while loop. We're gonna make the condition true as we have done in the past. Um, we're going to click on the fix formatting so we don't have to do a lot of you know, indenting. Then we're gonna go ahead and race the body and we're gonna go ahead and for our first one, we're gonna go ahead and put an if statement. So in this case, we're not gonna use if else Okay, we're actually gonna use a combination of three if statements, all right? And it's gonna be a little more convoluted than necessary, but we're doing this to, to kind of highlight a couple of different things, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull over this if statement right here. Whoops, and that did not come with our body. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here's our first if statement in the while loop, all right? Okay, so uh, so our condition, uh, sorry, in our body, we're just gonna go ahead and start motor. Okay, so we're gonna pull over under natural language. We're gonna go ahead and go into movement and start motor. Oops, and I forgot to save. Let me go ahead and save real quick. Okay, and uh, Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do this start motor and this is gonna be just our wheel motor. Okay, wheel motor, we're gonna do 127 here. Okay, when we want this, when we want this motor to start is when both switches are clicked, okay? So we know how to get the value of a switch. We know how to check if a switch is clicked, right? We're gonna get the value of the switch and we're gonna compare it to the value of one. When a switch is pushed down, it's a, it comes back as a value of one, okay? We want one switch clicked. We want the left switch clicked and the right switch not clicked. So we only want one switch clicked. Left switch is, right switch is not, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and get the sensor value, right? So we're gonna go under, drag over sensor value and we're gonna get the value of our left switch. Okay, and remember that's gonna come back as a zero or one. We're gonna double check, so we're gonna put equals. We're gonna ask the question, is the left switch equal to one? Okay, and that's asking, is it clicked, right? Okay, and then we wanna also compare our value. So I'm just gonna copy this statement here. Copying works quite well, okay. And we're gonna say sensor value of right switch is equal to zero, okay? So basically we want a condition where the, the right switch is not clicked, left switch is clicked, okay? 
And we're going to combine these two into one statement. And how we're do that, we're going to put an and in the middle. So if you were to read this, we'd say, we want the left switch clicked and the right switch not clicked. OK, makes sense. And how we put an and in, in, a, um, in a Boolean statement is we use a double ampersand. OK, so this double ampersand right here is the equivalent of the word and. OK, so left switch is equal to 1 and right switch is equal to 0. That's it, and. It's a simple math statement, right? This, this is true and this is true. They both have to be true, right? Left switch has to be equal to 1. Right switch has to be equal to 0 for the whole statement as a whole to evaluate 2. So if this is true, right, if it is not, not clicked, and this is true, it is, it is clicked, OK? Then if they both come together as true, the whole thing evaluates to true, and line 12 is executed, OK? If one of them is true, so let's say the left switch is clicked, but the right switch is clicked also, then we're going to have and false, right? That means they're both the not, both of them are not true. One is false and one is true. That means the whole thing is going to evaluate to false. OK. Ugh. False. Line 12 will be skipped. It won't be executed. And it'll just go on to line 14. OK. All right. So with this and, both statements have to be true for the whole thing to be evaluated as true. OK? All right, so there's our first thing. So basically, while this is looping, um, we're going to say, OK, we're going to start motor if um, left switch is clicked, right switch is not clicked. OK? All right, now, if nothing executes, we want to go ahead and uh, we just want it to just keep running, OK? All right, so uh, if, uh, if this, you know, actually, well, sorry, that was, uh, OK. Ignore what I just said. Ignore that babble that just came out of my mouth, OK? Uh, <laughs> so, so if after that statement occurs, we don't want it to evaluate anything else in the loop, OK? So we're going to use this keyword called continue, OK? We only want one thing to happen in this loop, OK? So if. It gets into this, if this evaluates as true, and it executes start motor, basically continue says, hey, ignore everything else in the loop and just go back up to line eight. It says, OK, if we get to this, if it hits the word continue inside this while loop, ignore everything else, go to the end of the code block, go back up to line eight, and start go on the next, next uh, iteration of the loop. OK, so that's continue. All right, it's very, very useful as flow control. Okay, so if you have a if you have a command where you want that to be the last thing in the loop and you just want it to go back up and start the next iteration, if it hits that, it's continue. Okay. All right. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and copy our whole if command. Notice that like once I get this structure in, I don't have to build it again. I can just copy it, right? If I know I want a very similar thing to be happening, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and paste it in here. Okay, I know that was quick, but just bear with me, all right? In this case, I want if the sensor value of the left switch is not clicked and the right switch is clicked, I want to stop the motor, okay? Okay, so notice that I'm typing a little more at this point, all right? I want to stop the motor, okay? Does that make sense? All right, great. So basically, we have one if statement that basically if the left switch is clicked, right switch is not clicked, we start the motor. And then it just continues the next iteration and checks again. Okay? If the right switch is clicked and the left switch is not clicked, we're going to stop the motor. Okay? And it just continues, goes back to the next iteration, starts again. Okay? The final condition is if they're both clicked. Okay? Now, I'm well aware that we could have done this with if, else, if, if, else, if, and else statement. Okay? But using the continue in the break is something we want to practice. All right? If they're both clicked at the same time, OK, we want to go ahead and break. All right. OK, so we have one case where we're not handling, right? There's one case here that we're not handling. And what is that? When they're both not clicked. If they're both not clicked at the same time, we just want it to continue on as is. That's it. It will just continue on in its same state. Nothing will, nothing will change. OK, if we break, 
Okay, so basically if they're both clicked, line 22 is executed, break exits us out of the loop. Okay, so this is a way that if you, if you use this infinite loop, break is really useful because that essentially lets you escape from an infinite, infinite loop or escape from any loop at a particular time. So if you have a loop that's going and going and going, but you want some way to break out of that loop and go on to the next line of code. So basically if it hits break, it will just go out of the line of, it'll go out of this while code block and it will go to the last line. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. And in this case, there is no last line. So just the program ends. Basically it cuts off power and it just stops. Okay. So that is our kind of more, uh, more involved if statement as well as the use of, so, so there are a couple things we learned here. Okay. We learned to use and, okay. In the ampersand and, okay. There's also an or that we'll learn to use. Okay. But this time it's just and we learned to use the continue keyword in a loop to, 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 to just ignore everything else in an iteration, go to the next iteration. And we learned to use break and that's a way to exit out of a loop mid loop. Okay. Without going back up here to the condition. All right. Best of luck guys.